As Deep Analysis has been released, it includes great new modules, the generation of seismic loads, snow loads, wind loads, and a module for the beam analysis. This is Javier Encinas, and today I'm going to present an overview of this new package in the family of ASDIP products, ASDIP Analysis. I have prepared an example to simplify the input. Let's open a calculation for a seismic load. Double click on this node. And this is a template of the generation of seismic loads in ASDIP Analysis. In the ground motion tab, we enter the information of the site of your project, site class, option from A to F, according to these descriptions. Then at the bottom, the response acceleration parameters. These parameters may be provided in the soils report. If not, they can be found in several sources. This link provides one of these websites, which is an excellent source for this information. If we click on the building tab, then these are options and parameters for the building itself, the risk category with this uh, as a seven reference option from one to four then the seismic force resistance system different options from a to h depending on the selection you can click on this button and there's a sub menu where you can select different options as well and the program will use these values from the database for example if i change here to moment resistance system and then click again to this button there's a new table that shows different options here. Then at the bottom, the structure type by period. This information is used in the program to calculate the period of the structure. If we go to the geometry tab, here you enter the number of stories in your building. Maximum is 40. In this example, there are only 15, but we can increase the numbers. For example, if we click here, 16, 17, for each level, it is necessary to enter the story weight and the story height. If the numbers in the new stories are the same, just click the mouse in any of these uh, numbers, then copy values to all stories, and then the values are copied immediately to the rest of the stories. At the right-hand side, in the Calculations tab, this is a detailed set of calculations in the ground motion with some of the values entered as an input, others are calculated, with references to the asset seven uh, provisions. The seismic design category, then the seismic fault resistance system with the references, and then the calculation of the equivalent lateral force. Here is the calculation of the fundamental period, then the seismic response coefficient, and finally the seismic base shear. Here in the tabular format, we see the distribution of that shear in the different stories and here at the bottom the seismic diaphragm forces graphically we can see the building elevation showing the different forces at different levels this information of the seismic loads is very useful let's open a calculation for the generation of snow loads double click on this node and this is a template for the snow load generation in as deep analysis in the ground snow tab this is information related to the site where your project is located. Options from B to D, according to these descriptions. Then the roof exposure, fully exposed, partial exposed, or sheltered. And finally, the snow loads, the ground snow load, and then the winter wind parameter. These factors can be found in uh, AC7, or you can go to this link. Um, the website provides this information according to the location of your project. If you go to the building tab, this information is related to your particular building, the thermal condition, option from A to D, according to this description, then the city factor, the thermal factor, either calculated or user defined, and then the risk category, per this reference in AC7, options from one to four. And finally, the roof geometry is the roof slope as a proportion of a 12, for example, 0.25 over 12 means quarter of an inch per foot. Then they have to reach width. If the roof is unobstructed slippery, then this checkbox should be checked. Let's go to the snow drift. There are four different cases at roof step, at parapet, at roof projection, 
and at adjacent structure, and the program will calculate this accordingly. For each case, there are different values that need to be provided, for example, the high roof length, the low roof length. In the right-hand side, the Calculations tab shows a detailed set of calculations with exposed formulas and references to the AC7, the ground snow load for the flat roof snow load, different calculation, exposed formulas and the references, the sloped roof snow load, and then the slow drift calculation. And for every case, the drift length and the drift height is calculated and provided in the report. Let's go to the graph tab. Here graphically is presented the snow drift for the roof step, for the roof parapet, for the roof projection, or for adjacent structure. Let's go back to the project manager. Let's open a calculation for a wind load. Let's double click on this node. And this is a template for the generation of wind loads in ASDIP analysis. In the wind parameters tab, this information is required for the area where your project is located. Exposure category, either B, C or D, according to this description, and then the wind speed. These parameters can be found either in, in AC7 provisions or also can be found in different sources, for example, in this website. If we go to the building tab, this information is related to your particular building, the risk category, either one to four, according to this description, then the building geometry, the dimensions of the building, the height and the width and length, roof type, either gable or monoslope, enclosure classification, either enclosed or partially enclosed, and then some factors for the components uh, calculation. In the right hand side, in the calculations tab, the wind parameters, then the building geometry, then the calculation of the velocity pressure with exposed formulas, and finally the main wind force resistance system pressure coefficients. Then in tabular format, the pressures are shown for the different cases, for the different zones. And at the bottom, the component and cladding pressure coefficients, and then the wind pressure for the different components, roof and wall. Graphically, we go to the graph tab. These are the different load cases uh, referenced in the report. Then for component and cladding roof, different areas, and for the component and cladding wall, the different areas as well. Let's go back to the project manager, open a calculation for a beam analysis. Let's double click on this node. In the geometry tab, you enter the number of support, maximum of five spans, and then you enter the span length and the different support type. In the properties tab, these are some values that are necessary to calculate the deflections. Then in the loads tab, you can enter either a single set of pre-combined loads or I specify a set of load cases and let us decombine them. In both cases, you specify either uniform, variable, concentrated, or moments. In the case of load cases, you have dead, live, roof life, snow, wind, and seismic. In the right-hand side, the program shows the support reactions per load combination, the bending moments, then the shear forces per load combination, torsional moments, and deflections. Graphically, the diagrams tab, the program shows the shear diagram and the moment diagram per load combination, showing the support reactions as well. As you can see, it's very easy to use this new package as the analysis. It includes several modules that will be very useful in your design practice. If you like the software, please visit the website www.asdeepsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.